Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast, You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Monday, January 22, 2024. You're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? We've got another set of new highs. The market is once again at an all-time high. New all-time high on Friday, new all-time high today. Are we in the midst of A, a new high and a collapse? B, new highs and a blow-off top slash operation that can go a lot higher? Or C, something in the middle? And the reality is we don't know. We just let the market dictate what she's doing, provide the clues, the evidence, it's our job to interpretation, whatever the market is willing to provide. So what does that mean? Well, at new highs, one of the things we can look for are signs and or signals of a trend change. Something that's very important, something that I look for at new highs or new lows, something that's been taught extensively in the lazy e-mini trader course and certainly in these videos and beyond do we have anything like that today no can we get something like that tomorrow next monday next friday two days from now any day of the week yes but we don't guess we wait things more from a small time frame to a larger time frame Maybe the market pulls back, gives us an opportunity to get long, get on board for a blow-off top slash type opportunity. You never know what she gives you. What we do know, among other things, is the trend is your friend until it's over. Right now, she's in an uptrend, and that's it. All time frames, the market is above all moving averages, certainly gets overextended, if you will, overbought hate that term no measurement for it however there is a point where she gets too far from home base generally speaking once she gets too far and too far is subjective so there's no ideal number but once she gets in the neighborhood of too far from home base and we can use it visually on the chart how far away does she generally get from home base sometimes more than others so whenever she gets a little bit extended from home base, we say, well, she likes to go sideways, eat some time off the clock, let home base creep up to price or pull back some and work off some of that quote unquote overbought condition, come back in to run a test of home base, reset the tape, reset the gun and start things all over again. Everything has a beginning and an end and everything is a fractal of something else. When you understand those two things, you understand that markets go up, markets go down, and one thing is more dominant than the next. Chew on that for a minute. It's one of those lessons within the lesson within the lesson. Putting things in perspective, you look at a monthly chart and you say, all right, so she's now busted through the former high. How much higher is she going to go is she going to go to 500? Will 500 be magnetic? Generally speaking, yes. Does that mean she's getting to 500? Not necessarily. Does that mean as she gets closer to 500, 492, 493, 495, 496, they get drawn into 500, come just short, they get close. Sometimes they come up short. Other times they spike them through. You know the routine and therefore they get close to 500, pull them back. The media goes on a frenzy about 500, 5,000, all that stuff, those psychological places. Nothing we need to worry about tomorrow. We're looking at the big picture. We're looking at the monthly chart. That's a big picture type of situation. What about an annual chart? Does this give us any information? An annual chart of the SPY, which isn't the total of the S&P. It's just as far back as the SPY goes, but it doesn't look that different than the SPX cash index. Is this chart telling us anything? No, she's way far from home base. It is in the trading parlance known as getting parabolic, already is parabolic. What happens at some point to those 
parabolic straight line up charts. They retrace a large majority of the move. If this was a penny stock, I would say they're coming back down to 1500 In the case of a penny stock, we'll call it 15 cents. Maybe it was a regular stock, 15 bucks. In the S&P, I'm telling you, at some point into the future, they're coming back to 15, 16,000. It may not be over the next four to five years. It may be a decade or two away. We have no idea, but they're coming back to 1,500. What about the six month chart? Does this tell us anything? Well, not really. It's in an uptrend. The trend is your friend. Tremendous breakdown candle. They retrace the whole thing and they have through June of this year to close above or below the high of that candle. That's going to be very telling after June, the close of June this year. That's when the next six month candle will click off. Are they going to close above the high of a big time breakdown candle high? They have several months to let us know. Write that down. Put it in your calendar. Back to the daily chart. Do we have tremendous volume today in excess of the normal average daily volume of late? The answer is no. Do you have a sign and or signal of a trend change? You could make a case for a candle like that, but without the accompanying volume, we're not going to make a federal case out of it. We're just going to say they closed relatively close to the open as well as a rather narrow range today. We're going to leave it at that. What was inside the numbers saying today? Did anybody make money today in the live room? Go ahead and post a comment or two under the video. Let's hear if anybody was able to squeeze any kind of profit out of today's activity. We had some follow through to fresh new highs. Wake up this morning, zero dark 30. Not a lot traders can do with that. You kind of see the writing on the wall. If they're in the middle of a melt up operation or a situation, it's going to take a lot of the opportunity away from the traders, the day traders. Day traders need volatility to make a living. That's what we need. Some days they don't give us a tremendous amount of volatility. We just tip our cap and we move it along. We don't impose our will on the market. We don't pretend there's volatility in the market. We don't invent trades. We don't justify trading opportunities because we want to be in a trade. We don't do any of that. That's rookie ball. It's amateur stuff. So let's take a step back and let's understand what we have on the board in terms of numbers. So as the market was open this morning in the pre-market, they're pushing to new highs. We have 485 as a natural place, natural resistance. Whether you want to believe it or not, it's natural resistance. I call it a semi-fat round number. We think better in pictures. Right of the vertical is today's activity. Here is an SPY five-minute chart. The horizontal blue line running across the screen is precisely at 485. And the high of day was just a few pennies above 485 representing overhead resistance, a magnetic number, and an important place, a semi-fat round number. Whether you want to believe it or not, they are what they are. So we had that. Did we have some traders that took a short at 485? Yes, we did. Is it an easy short in the melt-up operation? No, it's not. Did we have numbers in the downside? Yes, we did. We didn't need them today. We'll move it along. So what else did we have? Where are they now? Before the opening bell, 907, what do we got? Do we have a trade on the board? Well, we have the former high, which was eclipsed on Friday, 479.98. So we know that. The next number I had, which is nothing other than a math figure. It's just a calculation. It's formula related. We mentioned this in the live room today. And I say, listen, we like to build a full stack. What's a full stack? The more items you have pointing to a specific number, it's a breakdown candle high, it's a Fibonacci retracement, it's also a pivot low, it's a this, it's a that, it's a Lupinacci vector. All these things point to a specific number. The more things you have, the more evidence builds that that in fact is an important number, an important place, and I call those the makings of a full stack situation, a full stack, meaning you have a full stack of items supporting the case why if you're going to put money at risk at this particular place, this is the reason why to do it. 
Well, when you just have a number, 48350, you don't have anything near a full stack. You just have the actual mathematical figure. Well, is that enough? For some traders, yes. For some traders, no. I'm bringing it to the forefront. I'm letting you know that's all you have. So therefore, the next number on my board was 483.50 above the former highs, which they eclipsed on Friday. So the next thing we had was 483.50. Now you look at this and you say, all right, your blue line is now at 483.50. And there is something to that. That was important. Whether they spiked it below by a few pennies or above by a few pennies, they still centered around this number for a lot of the day, a big portion of the day. And by the way, Last candle of the day on this five-minute chart. What's the close? 453, 483, 52. Any accidents or coincidences? Anybody? Bueller? Anybody? Daily chart close. Closing print, 483, 45. Intraday chart. Hourly close, 483, 52. Are there any accidents or coincidences? Can I get a no chance. How do you know about 483.50 before the opening bell? I'll leave that answer up to you. What else do we have? I'm going to scroll up. They centered on this number. They didn't do anything all day other than some traders bought a bounce from 483.50. Some traders shorted 485. It was not a day trading, lightning fast type of tape. We had a couple of things for here and there, there's something for everybody inside the live room. We had a trade in Gilead today, and there were only two stocks on the board this morning. They'll pick up this week. There's a ton of earnings this week. Monday is just a dud. PM was getting a haircut at the open. That hit its entry target. We'll take a look at that one. Now, technically speaking, they actually did the deal three times or maybe two times. I don't know if they got them here in this candle the low here was 54.51 against 54.58, three pennies short, came back to the first number. But they did the deal at the first number. We had traders in the room have it, inside the numbers had it. They did the deal. Doesn't look like much on this chart, but the bounce up here from 56.11 was to a high of 57.20, and that's a buck. And you're looking for about 1% give or take for the scalp portion with potential. This gave you two, two of them, two percentage points. Nice trade. That's good for a day slash scalp trade. And then they did the thing at the third number again. They bounced up. But the trade was over here. I got asked in the live room, what about the second number? I said, the trade is over. Leave this alone. It came up short anyway. In real time, traders in the live room got a crack at Gilead. We had some participants in there. 78.21, they came into it, spiked it by a few pennies, proceeded to rip it back up in the other direction. Doesn't look like much on this chart, but they got to a high about 79.60, give or take, from a day trade slash scalp trade perspective. That's a just fine opportunity with no heat, I might add. What's going on over in Camp IWM? Right into the 20 period moving average, closed right on top of it today. Very, very bullish relative strength up over 2%. S&P 500 was up about two-tenths of 1%. Tremendous amount of relative strength. In addition, not only that, but the second favorite market leading indicator, Team Transports, which we'll get to in a moment, also up about 2% today, over 2%. So your two favorite market leading indicators are mine, up big, relative strength, canary in the coal mine stuff. So let's look at this one objectively. Market gaps down over here to about 197. This was on the 3rd of January. Goes sideways for a week or week and a half. And then it collapses down. Now you're right back up to that general area stopped by the 20 period moving average. But the general area where the top end of the zone is where they ate time off the clock trying to recover. We're not able to do it. They tried in this candle here on the 8th to recover. They really couldn't do it. So here they're back up at the same place where they tried to recover after failing, but this was all they failed. They couldn't get below the 50 period moving average. They had every opportunity to go lower. They chose not to. They chose to be back up to the point, one of the points from which they failed. I think that's really important. 
I think from a conceptual standpoint, you got to kind of jot that down in the back of your mind and on a sticky note. Because here's the deal. We can use this high, this candle high from the 3rd of January at 197.67. So just call it for argument's sake. They start closing candles above 198. And that's going to open the door for another leg higher, notwithstanding this gap over here at 199 and change. But that's not going to be the end. That's likely just a way station. It seems on the surface to be more bullish than may meet the naked eye. Now, what about the folks down at the Transportation Department? Judges crew. Above all the moving averages, you know the drill. Trend is your friend. Approaching the area, not yet here, approaching the area of the recent highs. Above all the moving averages, just take it at face value. It's a rip-roaring rocket ride away from the lows a few days ago where we had, and we talked about it at the time, go back to the videotape market symmetry into the area, the general vicinity of a breakup candle low. How you doing? You look at the weekly chart, it's more pronounced. Big time weekly breakup candle, pull back down to the bottom. They tested the low of the bottom, rocket right away from it, back up toward the top. That's pretty much what happened above all the moving averages. We talked about this on the weekly chart for the last several times, which is, this is a pullback in an uptrend inside this breakup candle, period. So we'll issue that one a funny how that works. What about the Q people? Trend is your friend, nothing wrong here. That's your weekly chart. That's your daily chart. You have new highs. They'll obviously stop going higher, pull back, give the 20 period moving average your home base a chance to catch up to price, or they'll come back and test the 20 period moving average one of those things will happen in the near term. That doesn't mean the rally's over. That just means it's a pullback in the midst of an uptrend as they work off some of the overbought condition and they recock the tape, recock the gun for the next move higher. That's the way it works in an uptrend. How do you like Dem Apples? XLF. Anything wrong with the financials? No, sir. That's a big time number. Start pushing above, closing above 38.17. That's going to promote another leg higher for the XLF. We talked about it just about every day over the last week or two. If there's nothing wrong with the financials, it's unlikely the mess of the market is unraveling. It's just a pullback in the midst of an uptrend, and there was nothing wrong with the financials. They dipped below the 20-period moving average for three days and then had another rocket ride back up. When you look at the weekly chart, was there anything wrong? No, absolutely not. This was a pullback in an uptrend, and we talked about it each and every night. Smash mouth, same routine, new highs, a little bit extended from home base. Don't be surprised to see a pullback. We can use Friday's candle low as a bogey. The low is 181.42. Can they come back to test in the neighborhood within a buck or so of the low of Friday's candle and still completely be in an uptrend and have worked off the overbought quote unquote condition, letting the 20 period moving average or home base creep up to price. And the answer is absolutely. The trend is your friend until it's over at minimum, until they show you a sign and or signal of a trend change that you can hang your hat on, have something to trade against. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos, they're not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.